Hi guys, welcome back to Boomex Beauty Beat. My name is Laura. I'm a retired makeup artist and on Boomex Beauty Beat we do everything lifestyle, beauty, and self-help. And if you're a mature woman, this is the place for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe because we cover all kinds of topics that are relevant to you. Today is one that I think hasn't been really spoken about at all and I wanted to cover this. This is working with cream eyeshadows or liquids and things like that on mature eyes, which is a much different animal than doing it when you're younger. Because we have wrinkling, because we have crepiness, there are some things that we need to follow in order to make it doable. Otherwise, it can just make our wrinkles look worse. So stay tuned for that. I am going to be uh, following up this little beginning chat with a full demo of a cream eyeshadow using uh, Danessa Myricks. So I want you guys to stay tuned for that. I had this filmed a few months ago and for whatever reason I was just going to delay putting it up and never put it up but I really love the look. I think the look is cute so I'm going to use that as my demo because it shows you real clear how I'm working with the creams on my eyes and it might be able to help you with that. If you are having trouble with with your cream eyeshadows or have questions about how to work with it or which you know techniques to use anything you guys can just go ahead and ask I'll be happy to do that I just reminding you guys that we're in our anniversary week and we are doing a subscriber giveaway I will be revealing the items in the subscriber giveaway goodie bag I think on Saturday and so basically what you need to do is just comment below what your favorite videos are and uh, every comment that you leave I'm going to put a separate entry in so if you have more than one comment that's totally fine more than one favorite video totally fine and you have to be subscribed so just to remind you of that it's going to be a good little goodie bag I have to say that as of this year I am using cream eyeshadow products probably 80 to 90 percent of the time. I might use it for my whole look, I might use it for part of my look, but let me give you some guidelines of what to do for your eyes because there's a couple things that happen with our eyes being that they're mature. One is that if you put on, for example, uh, if you put something like, this is a Liz Watier kind of cream eyeshadow. I'll put it onto my hand here. You can see it's a really pretty rosy shimmery color. But if I was to apply this over the entire lid, obviously with the shimmer and everything else, it's not really great for a base to work with that as a base all over. You're better off, first of all, starting with some sort of, uh, you know, a, a base that is a matte. So start your base out being a matte. This is a Smashbox always on cream shadow. I love these as well. They're very opaque for the most part. What you want to do is you want to create a little bit of a matte base like this could be for example your transition color and when you're doing that you want to make sure first of all that you've clarified the eye. Maybe you have a lot of discoloration so if you need to put an eyeshadow primer on or you can use something like a soft okra from matte. I will show you that. Let me grab that. Okay, so this is a soft okra from MAC. It's just like the color of your eyelid, skin color. You can put that down as well first if you want to as a base. But what I'm getting at is when you've got uh, a matte color on your eyelid that's a cream base, it's one of the best things you can do for mature eyes because it will be, first of all, when it's wet, you have to use it properly. When it's wet, it's easier to blend. So you can see now I've let that dry down and then it's harder to, it's pretty stuck on, right? It's harder to move, uh, which is actually amazing because us with mature eyes, our eyeshadow tends to disappear on us as we get older. It just seems to like soak into our eye or something like that, I don't even know. But I'll show you how to work with this just on my hand here to give you an idea. I'm just gonna work with uh, this neutral brown again from Smashbox. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit onto my hand. Then you wanna take any kind of like fluffy brush like this and you want to work that onto the eye while it's wet and, and let it sort of buff out. And you can see how it leaves a nice soft residue there. It's not like 
thick and goopy like the one I put on my hand, but using a brush, it diffuses out really, really well. That's the Always On from Smashbox. They have really nice opaque cream shadows. I'm going to just compare this up against the Color Fix. It's kind of like a taupey color from Danessa Myrex, and I'll put that on my hand and show you that as well. Just use this brush as well. And again, with Danessa's products, you if you get it while it's wet and you diffuse it and put it in the places that you want it to go, it's great. But if you leave it and you don't blend it and it has a chance to dry, it's going to maybe dry in places you don't want to, you know, you don't want it to. So you want to make sure that you're working it in as it's wet and use a, like a, you know, a nice diffused brush that can kind of smooth it out in places around the edges, but not make it look too intense too quickly it kind of saw and then you could build you can put more than one layer on and build but you see these mats that I have on my hand are very 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 forgiving on someone with mature eyes hooded eyes folded eyes all of those kinds of things creepy everything okay and then you've got products that are like in tubes like this like Stila these are are like toppers these are like shimmers and you want this to go over top of your mat you don't want to put that down alone you want something for it to grip onto and you want something um, you don't want to put this down as your as your only base because uh, the color will be a lot better and purer if you layer the shimmer on top of your mat if I'm to put shimmer up here, it will make your eyes look way crepier than they are. So, but if you strategically, what, like what I like to do is put shimmer right, like along the inner corner here and along the lid, and that way you can get away with it. There's, there's more, there's more. So many of us have tried a cream eyeshadow on our eyes and we're like, oh, a one and done. This will be great. And there are some eyeshadows like that. But again, I really recommend putting down kind of a neutral base first. However, when you have an eyeshadow color, this one is like the one from MAC. When there's shimmers like this, it's kind of like an opalescent um, and they're creamy like this. The MACs are really good for not creasing, but there are several cream products out there that do crease in the eyelid. So you're going to have to, you know, try it out creasing in here especially right right where you open your eyelid and when you're hooded and you're putting creams and they're really emollient they will settle into the uh, crease area that's why I highly suggest putting down kind of a, a, a natural neutral color in your uh, crease area and then topping just the lid and maybe the inner corner with your shimmers so that you can balance the situation that you have as far as it looking crepey, as far as it creasing, and all that stuff. So you have to like watch where your placement is when you have mature eyes. Because if you don't, then you're just going to age your eyes like there's no tomorrow. But we still want sparkle in our lives, so let's not give up on the sparkle. A couple more I want to show you is, another one is Inglot. Inglot, this is the eyeliner that I'm wearing today. And it's a cream, it is a cream, but it's really, it's a lot stiffer than, a, you know, a regular cream. It's thicker. And when you put it on, it goes on like really, really intense. But it also works excellent as an eyeliner. So using a cream eyeliner like Inglot, like what I've done here today, it will make it so that you can get it in, like I'll show you, you can get it in. To these areas and it won't move on you once it dries down but it's really easy to get on because when we have wrinkles in our eyes here sometimes we get that skipping you know with our eyeliner and it doesn't go on properly and with this see I'm just putting it on and with the Inglot you can layer as well you could put this uh, uh, down and then you can put a little bit of eyeshadow on top of it to intensify the color and then put this on top again like this is really really good on the eyeliner department it also can be used as a matte eyeshadow but it is a lot thicker to work with um, so I usually end up using this as an eyeliner and then you're going to get other 
types of products like I've got this one here from Kaja that's a really pretty topper again like try to avoid the temptation of just doing the one and done all over the eye because us with wrinkles and creepiness on our eyes it can make it look more wrinkled okay so let's just try this Kaja one out here and I'm going to put it on top of this mat this Kaja one kind of comes out funny it's sort of not very well mixed inside um, again like these with uh, with a topper on top look really really pretty but putting them on just on a uh, solo on their own looks fairly unfinished and also can accentuate the lines if you don't have a matte base underneath it so this is just a little trick for you guys to watch out for and you'll see in the demo that I do create that I put the mattes down first, I put a white down and then a purple and then a metallic. A metallic goes on, on last. And you know, finally you can always, I forgot I had this, this is like heavy metal, this is a, a really pretty sparkle from Urban Decay. You can put the sparkles on like very, very last where you, I'm just putting a little bit onto this blue here, where you have like an eyeliner sparkle that's a creamy or liquidy substance to kind of pull off some extra oomph. If you want to, you can totally do that as well. I'll show you how this goes on. I guess I can show you here. It just, if you're, it just jazzes it up a little bit. Say for example, if we ever get to go out to fancy somewhere, <laughs> you can use something like this on top. And if you've got a nice solid base down underneath, it'll stick really well and you'll be able to see the sparkles. But there are products that if the quality is not there, sometimes you will get that creasing. So you have to watch that. So I'll show you ways to work around it. So say for example, I've got this one here. This is a Halloween kit from NYX. We'll just go into the white for a minute. So if I was to put this white all over my eye and I tended to crease, this very easily from the heat of your eye will get all creased up in here. So all you need to do, if you've put down a little bit of cream like that all you need to do is follow that up with some white eyeshadow on top of the cream base and it will seal it up so that you don't have to worry about it creasing if you want to go for say if you want to just wear a white eyeshadow for a look and you and the creams are excellent at making it opaque and making it look like an impact however it can crease if it's not the right product so if you're finding your product is creasing, try to find an eyeshadow color very, very similar or exactly the same as that and put it on top of the cream and it will seal it up and then you can kind of continue on. But I'm going to tell you one other trick. Let me just show you. Okay, so for example, this is a Natasha Denona um, cream. This is like a liquidy cream shadow. This is in a gold color. I'll try to find a hand, a piece of arm here to work with. So if I was to go like that and put that down on my eyelid and then I was going to take a powder like a maybe a gold eyeshadow let me grab one. I'll show you it with this uh, Huda Wild. I just love this palette. This is what I'm wearing today on my eyes you guys. It is the most beautiful palette. If you want to see me do a look with this just let me know below and I will. Um, anyways so I've got that Natasha Denona and then I've got I'm putting a, a powder, I'm putting this gold a little bit with my finger, putting that onto that spot that I did that Natasha Denona. So say I did that, I wanted to intensify the gold. And then I'm like, oh, I'll just put a little bit more of this on top, like this, put it on top of that powder that I put down. What happens on our mature eyelids is when you put a cream, a powder, and then a cream on top, it will intensify the wrinkles. So make sure that you put your matte powders down, all your powders down, and your shimmery, glimmery products last. Leave it to last and you could top with it, but don't put any powders over top of that again because it will pull the wrinkles together and really accentuate them. So you can work with shimmers, you can work with metallics, you can work with sparkle, you can work with all of that just got to keep your cream over powder in the right order and if you want your eyeshadow to really really stay put a cream neutral base down you can easily follow over a matte 
with a powder, but not a shimmer. A shimmer will accentuate wrinkles, so you have to watch for that. My favorite, favorite uh, cream products are the, the MAC Paint Pots, the Danessa Myricks, Color Fixes, the Smashbox Always On. All of their colors are gorgeous. The Inglot that I showed you earlier. Sigma has some, some good stuff too. I don't mind theirs. And there's so many liquids that I love to work with as well. There's um, the Liz Watte ones. There's the Matt, MAC. These are all sparkle toppers that are beautiful to work with. Um, but yes, be really, really cautious. Like Especially when you start playing with colors like this. Like Natasha Denona, this, this one's kind of getting dried up. But this really dark color. Ooh, it's really dry. Anyways, it looks all, it's probably why it's on sale. It looks kind of choppy. So it's really shimmery. Again, if I was going to use this, I would put down, you know, a nice matte grayish or, or purpley black first top with the shimmery color. And it will much less accentuate the lines that you have around your eyes. So let's get on with the demo so you guys can see the look that I made with this with the Danessa Myricks color fixes. And they're fabulous to also mix together just to let you know. Don't ever have to worry about going with a color just as is. Like this is one of the purples that I had. So I'll just put it on the white over here. So this purple is one of the ones that I do in the demo. It's really pretty and I work with the whites. But don't be afraid to mix your creams together. So I've got that purple on there. What can I grab from Danessa to show you a mix? So say for example, I've got the purple, I've got a white here. And if you mix them together, you'll get like a much softer, more muted purple. So I mean, don't be afraid to mix colors together to, to get different tones that you like. And it is half the fun. It's so fun to do that. So let me know what you guys think of creams. And uh, yeah, I'll get on with the video demo. And please leave your questions below and let me know if you're struggling with creams, liquids, anything on the eyes for mature eyes. I hope this was helpful. All right, roll it, demo. This one that we're gonna be playing with today. So don't go anywhere because it's going to be so beautiful. Look at this color. Yikes. Also got, um, well, I guess I should give you the name of it, huh? Wild Orchid. Ah. And then I also got this one, which is another metallic. It's uh, called, why do they make it? Titanium. It's a silver. I'll swatch it here. And just a little bit goes such a long way with these. Oh my god. Oh, I can't wait. Now we're going to be do using these three colors and I'm going to mix in this snow white. This is a matte, however, but I'm going to use this as a base and as a, as a brightener and enhancer to kind of bump up some of the metallics. But look at that beautiful opaqueness on that white. It's gorgeous. I saw Danessa do a white smoky look and it just was so beautiful and it just made me want this so badly. I don't have very much powder down on my eyelids because I want the paint to kind of, you know, not get all muddled into powder. So sorry about the creasing, but I'll just move that out and get the paint going right away. I have on my eyes the little e.l.f. tapes. They're kind of actually making my eyes water a little bit, but I wanted to do some extreme shaping. And last time I used tape, um, just real tape, the one when we did the Harush video. And I wanted to try some proper tapes now this time, so I thought that would be fun to be able to create. Because sometimes with our loose skin, as we get more mature, it's nice to have that reinforcement. It's kind of bugging the edge there. Reinforcement as far as um, sh helping us shape, because our skin wiggles around <laughs> and it's harder. So I'm just going to put this white paint everywhere and just to gain clarity to the eye, especially when we're going to be doing this, you know, extremely bright purple. I don't want it to get messed into my skin coloring or my, rather I should say, some of my discoloration that I get. So I thought, put the white down first, get it clear, and look what a nice job that does of making the eye really clean and clear and 
buildable and I'm probably going to let that just kind of set down for a minute or two. Uh, let's just start by maybe just placing it down with a flat brush and seeing the color payoff. This is like 90% dry so that's cool. Let's just see what happens. Oh, holy moly. This is not for the faint of heart. This is bold, you guys. But you can always mix this into anything you want to mix into. Because I've got, you know, this tape on, I'm going to do something where it lends itself to winging up to that tape. So let's do that. Uh, it's moving really easily. I'm just going to take a bit of a fluffy brush and see what happens if I take it and build it up slowly and move it around. Oh, that color is insane. So what I'm doing is just creating a bit of, this is lifting because I'm tearing so much, doing a little bit of a, a lifted sort of elongated V shape here. Let me see what brush is going to work in this scenario. I'm going to take a rounded brush. Let's see. Something a little softer on my delicate creping lids. <laughs> and build up that shape just a little bit. Honestly, like just like your your powder shadows, you just have to move it to blend it, but you know, it does it's so pretty. It does blend. And you can make it more intense if you pile on more, obviously more product. All right, now using that titanium, I'm gonna take my finger and try pressing it because I wanna see what happens with a most intense version of the shimmer. We'll try it with my finger first. It's fine, I wanna try it also with a brush and see what happens. Let's try a flat brush. I'm getting a little more pigment out of it with the flat brush, but I mean it's super intense. It's just what can I make? How can I make it the most opaque? We're gonna run that under the eye. I'll take a pencil brush here. This pencil brush is from Sigma. It's a detailed lip brush actually, but we're calling it. We're using it for whatever we want. And I'm just going to bring that color out and around under under the bottom and really defining the line and then picking at some of the edge detail work here to make it quite intense at the edge kind of what I'm going for all right I'm loving it so far I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll pull the tape and continue from there I actually got this a uh, micro Master Precise Skinny Maybelline Pencil. Uh, I wanted to play with something that was really tiny like this and uh, it's so great for rimming the eye because it's, you know, I find it's with your eyes getting smaller <laughs> as you get older. It's harder to get into places like this. But just being able to have it so tiny makes it so easy to get the tight line. I just love it. Well guys, I just topped off with uh, the just the mascara and the Lux Lash Kit from e.l.f. I wanted to try their lashes and you know what? I love them. They're really soft and flirty just like the box says and they're, you know, inexpensive. So I just wanted to show you those in case you're looking for some good inexpensive lashes. And what do you guys think of this look? Of course you could tone this down and just influx a little bit of purple, but I wanted to give it its full color glory. And the silver, I think, oh, it's so nice. It can go with everything. The metallics are a party on your eyes. I just wanted to focus on that for today and shaping them in some kind of way. Because sometimes as our eyes age it's harder to get you know kind of exacting shapes and fun shapes so I thought that the elf eye tapes really help to give it a more a more snatched that word snatched snatched look 
Ooh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> so take care and have a great weekend if it's your weekend. And uh, love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and like the vid. Comment. Bye.